Well, welcome class. Today what I'd like to do is review what we covered in the lab already. And as you know that all cells are kind of classified in two areas, the prokaryotes and the eukaryotes. And uh, those two particular types of cells we looked at extensively uh, with the microscopes. So I'd like to review them with you and kind of give you a better understanding of how it all fits together. I'd like to really consider their types and their structures as we look at this. So that's where you want to start today, talking about the types and structures. And when we take a look at it, I'd like to first of all start with the prokaryotes. The prokaryotes are relatively simple, basic type of cells. And many scientists believe that the eukaryotic cells have evolved from the prokaryotic ones. So you can see in this particular picture, uh, there are, they are, do have different shapes, but this rod-shaped one has a flagella. So they're very simple in the way they, they kind of do business. They're relatively small as well in comparison to the eukaryotic cells. But their architecture is also very uh, different in that, for instance, in the bacillus one, it's very rod-shaped in its, in its uh, shape. They, all of these uh, cells reproduce extremely fast. That's what can make them kind of dangerous in, in virulent conditions. So the bacillus one, as I said before, is rod-shaped. They sometimes get kind of connected together as, as they multiply and can, can form kind of a colony uh, structure. One of the more famous uh, bacillus is E. coli, is to reach E. coli. And they really inhabit our guts and in small numbers actually are very, very beneficial to uh, our digestive system. But as they get larger and larger in numbers, Typically what will happen is uh, you can get infected because of the toxins they secrete as they get uh, larger in number. The other one is the coccyx, and we saw that yesterday as well when we were looking at our, um, our bacteria um, in our yogurt. Uh, we looked at some, some live samples in yogurt, and they had a little cilia that moved around you know, under the slide. But the coccyx um, are circular or, or spherical. One of the more infamous ones is Staphylococcus Aurelius, and that causes pneumonia and also other infections as well. And the last one we looked at is spirillium. Spirillium is spiral in its shape. Also, sometimes at the ends they have long hairs or flagella or cilia. And, of course, uh, um, they were fairly easy to spot under the microscope. Now let's take a look at some of the, the basic organelles uh, that we have, because they're a little bit different than the eukaryotic uh, cells that we're going to look at uh, as well today. First of all, that what you'll notice extremely different if you take a look at uh, uh, this, these kinds of cells. And by the way, when we looked at the, the microscope, we were kind of lucky just to see their shapes because they're so, so small. But one of the things that you would notice uh, if we had an electron um, a microscope is the nucleoid. Nucleoid is, is kind of this irregular uh, shape, um, kind of, uh, it's really not a structure, it's kind of a void in, in the the bacterial cells it used to be called the nuclear zone, but now the nucleoid is just kind of this place where all the genetic, genetic, genetic material can be found. And it's kind of in the center, uh, but it also kind of moves around. Because in the nucleoid, there are two different kinds of, of DNA that, um, uh, that bacteria have. They have bacterial DNA, which uh, is, is kind of... A twisted and turned and spiral, and then it also has the plasmid DNA. That's the, the circular type. And the circular type are used a lot in genetic engineering because it's, first of all, fairly well understood, and uh, it can be opened up and, and closed to make uh, complete strands. We also have the capsule on the outside. The outside of a bacteria is made up of a lot of polysaccharides, and those polysaccharides become real slimy. They have the slime layer. And it's very difficult uh, for, uh, like, the phagocytes to come and eat them because they're so slippery. So it makes them more uh, virulent because it's hard for the phagocytes to get a hold of them and, and of course, destroy them. So between the, the, the capsule and the slime layer makes can give especially disease type of bacteria kind of a leg up. We also have the regular cytoplasm. And also if you take a look at the cytoplasm, really for the most of the time, um, Many scientists thought they didn't have any uh, cytoskeletons. Well, we, we now know that there is some type of uh, cytoskeletons, and it's kind of a recent find, but it's also a little bit more uh, basic, or um, I guess it, it's not quite as well developed in, like in the eukaryotic cells. And then we have a, uh, a cell wall and a cell membrane, kind of like in plant cells, but the cell membrane is very loose and very flexible, where the wall is on the outside, 
gives us some rigidity, but not as much as, let's say, plants. And then, of course, for locomotion, we have flagella and also the pili. The pili are like little arms. They kind of stick. They kind of reach out and kind of stick on things so they can pull themselves or anchor themselves uh, to something. And the other thing I didn't t tell you about the shapes is there's basically three types of shapes, as I said, the rod-shaped, the spherical, and the spiral, but also they're called a uh, vibrio. The vibrio is kind of a common shape one, and a lot of times it's not really mentioned. Well, this uh, the next group are the eukaryotic cells, and the eukaryotic cells um, are kind of the ones that we think of when we think of cell. You, when you look at a like a regular cell diagram or drawing, you're probably going to remember things like this. And there are basically two kinds of eukaryotic cells, plant cells and animal cells. And we looked at both um, quite extensively in the lab yesterday. We started with some plant cells, the elodea leaf, and they're very rigid and they're kind of squarish and blocky. And if you take a look at it very carefully, you'll look at it looks like the membrane is double layer, layered. And it's really not the, the membrane. The outside w kind of line is the wall, the cell wall, very rigid and it has lots of cellulose and lignin in it that kind of give it that, that basic uh, kind of tree shape. And then, of course, it has the membrane on, on the inside. So the cell wall and then on the inside is the membrane. It also has very large vacuoles in it uh, to keep water and salt so it keeps it in balance. And then the animal cell is, is more irregular in its shape. Uh, the, the cell membrane is very flexible and loose and, and kind of uh, will... Um, Keep it, sh it keeps its shape, but it's always kind of changing uh, somewhat. They, some of them have cilia on the outside, even some of them have flagella on the outside. And of course, on the inside of the cell, you can see a variety of different kinds of organelles. Obviously, the nucleus. Uh, the nucleus is covered with with a membrane, which is that's not happening in the uh, prokaryotic cells. So the eukaryotic cells have me uh, membranes around all their organelles, as well as they have a, a kind of a fixed area, which is the nucleus. And also inside the nucleus, um, the DNA within it, it is kind of loosely organized. It's not circular. It's, it's more in a strand. And if you ever watch the movie um, The Inner Life of Cells, you'll see like for the nuclear pores, you'll see the D, excuse me, the RNA coming out in a strand. And that's really a good, uh, kind of a good picture for you to keep in your mind as far as what it looks like uh, in, in the real cell. And um, well, since we are talking about organelles, here are some of them listed. Um, the this one right up, right up here, um, that's um, um, the ER or the endoplasmic reticulum with those little black dots and those the, the ribosomes where proteins are made. The messenger RNA comes through the uh, ER, and of course, then the the ribosomes come and starts reading it to to create, of course, proteins. And then we have uh, our our cell, um, our cell membrane right here. It's a phospholipid bilayer. You can see the two layers there, phosphorus and lipids, and also has proteins embedded into them too to, to do various uh, functions. And of course, a nucleus and a Golgi body, which packages up all of the goodies that the uh, uh, that the ER and the uh, ribosome uh, makes and packages on these small little kind of compartments. And they're taken with motor proteins and delivered physically delivered along the superhighway um, of um, uh, microfilaments uh, and uh, also um, other, other uh, parts of the cytoskeleton. And then um, right here, if it's a plant cell, it's going to have these thylakoids inside the chloroplasts. And then, of course, in this particular uh, picture, just the last few years with different dyeing techniques and, and good uh, microscopes, we're able to see the cytos. Uh, Plasm is extremely um, um, detailed and, and well laid out, kind of like a, a United States um, highway system. And then we have, of course, the powerhouse or the PG&E of the cell, and that would be the mitochondria. So these are just a few uh, of the organelles that we'll learn in, in more detail. And you really need to get a handle on um, all of these terms. So we're going to go um, actually make some flashcards. We'll also do some activities that kind of get you up to speed. Because if you don't get some of these uh, um, organelle names down and what they do, it, you're going to get behind. And then lastly, what I'd like to do is like compare. I'd like to compare um, the bo both types, uh, the, the prokaryotic cells to the eukaryotic cells. So you can see in this particular chart, prokaryotic cells, much smaller, whereas the eukaryotic cells are the larger of the, of the variety. Prokaryotic cells tend to be unicellular, even though they look kind of sometimes 
uh, when they multiply the living these colonies, but also eukaryotic cells tend to be multicellular uh, into organisms or um, organs. And then there's no uh, nucleus in a prokaryotic cell, and there's no membrane organelles. We just have that nucleoid. And then, of course, in the eukaryotic cell, we always have the nucleus, and they happen to also have uh, membrane-bound organelles as well. The DNA in prokaryotic cells is also different. They actually have two different types, bacterial DNA and plasmid um, or, or DNA that is circular, whereas DNA in eukaryotic is very linear and typically associated with the proteins um, to form the chromatids. And then uh, uh, ribosomes are relatively small in you, uh, prokaryotic cells. Eukaryotic ones, of course, are large. And then even though in, the, in this uh, diagram or this, uh, this chart it says there's no cytoskeleton, actually recently they have found kind of primitive forms of, of the cytoskeleton um, in, in these cells, whereas eukaryotics have a very complex network as we saw in the stain. And then, of course, how they reproduce is also listed there. Um, and I hope this really helps you in determining the difference between eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. At this time, you should be able to look at some slides or pictures and be able to sort them out. So, as we kind of wrap up this lab and the review for it, uh, make sure that we, you study all of the, uh, the vocabulary that comes along with it. I think you'll do well. So we'll see you back out in the lab next week. Thanks.